All right, welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. We're kicking off the show with football. Match day six of the UEFA Champions League got on the way early on Tuesday, with eight fixtures slated to take place. At Old Trafford, Manchester United hosted German champion Bayern Munich in what was a must-win match for the Red Devils if they were to stand a chance of progressing to the knockout rounds for next year. Let's take a look now at how it unfolded. Bayern Munich, 11 times in a row. Herman keeps it going. Goretzka wouldn't come to Muller. It has come to Kerman! And in front of the Stratford end, had by far the better of it. Harry Kane with 22 goals, but he's just provided a, a really good assist with the little poke here. That's lovely for Bayern's number nine and Koeman. And Manchester United's fate about to be confirmed by the full-time whistle from the Norwegian official here. It ends with a whimper for Eric Ten Hag and Manchester United. And it ends with a chorus of boos for the Manchester United manager. Four Champions League group stage defeats. That has never happened in the proud history of this football club. Their lowest ever Champions League group points tally. All right, Bayern Munich, of course, the ceiling that win and topping the entire group. So team, of course, Manchester United are suffering massive humiliation on being dumped out of Europe. But we have to start by talking about the winners, Bayern Munich. I think it's fitting that we do that. Uh, Koeman getting the goal, the assist from Harry Kane, well-deserved Bayern Munich. Yeah, beautiful assist from Harry Kane as well. Um, didn't get many chances today on his return to England, but yeah, impressive, involved in the goal. Um, thoroughly professional performance coming from Bayern Munich. They dominated the contest um, in almost every department of the game. But I guess you would have to say, Lance and Mariah, it was very much expected because this is a depleted Manchester United team. Yes, Manchester United have not been good, but it does not help when you don't have so many of your first choice players. And you look at today, for example, um, Anthony Martial, um, Marcus Rashford, both out of the squad completely because of illness. Then at halftime, the coach forced to make two substitutions. Luke Shaw taken off, um, seemingly because of injury as well. Harry Maguire replaced by Johnny Evans and Juan Bissaka coming on. So um, really tough for Manchester United. And when you have all those injury concerns dealing with, it can be difficult to put together quality performances, um, especially um, with with consistency and that's what we've seen from Manchester United there are days when they have been pretty decent and then there are other days when they have been done right horrible today was a tough day but you have to give a lot of credit to Bayern Munich as well because they were quite professional in the way they went about business and they ensured that they got the job done in any case it wouldn't have mattered even if Manchester United had won because FC Copenhagen beat Galatasaray yeah. and that's all they needed to do to book their place in the last 16. Mm. Yeah, Bayern Munich are a very solid team. You know, you have front men like um, Harry Kane, Musiala and uh, Coleman who, who got the winning goal today. Um, you have to be satisfied as a Bayern Munich fan with the offensive potency of your team. And um, both teams had come off domestic losses over the weekend. Eintracht Frankfurt defeating Bayern Munich heavily. 5-1, I think the score was. Uh, so uh, Bayern Munich's rebound immediate. And uh, Manchester United unable to rebound from their weekend woes, woes in England. So not an unexpected result, as uh, Ricardo just pointed out, but um, really top period here for Manchester United. Yeah, and a terrific performance as well by Upamecano for Bayern Munich. He was brilliant in defence. Um, every single time he had a duel with Hoyland, he came out on top. Um, and Hoyland just never got the space or room um, to have... Uh, any real forward thrust for Manchester United, um, similar as well for Garnacho when he was on the field. 
Um, Bayern Munich just really too good for this Manchester United team. At one point, the commentator referenced the first game that they played in the group where Bayern Munich won by four goals to three. And he suggested that that scoreline was flattering to Manchester United. In my opinion, this 1-0 scoreline was even more flattering um, to Manchester United because it was nowhere as close as the 1-0 scoreline suggests. Yeah, and I saw a comment on the BBC saying that, you know, um, you know, the, the, the reports were different people comment. So it's not an official BBC report, but a, a different analyst and past footballers and everybody comment. They said that Manchester United is going backwards under Eric Ten Hag. And I feel like now it is necessary that we have this discussion. Because for me, team, for some time Manchester United has been struggling. We already accepted that. But I feel like this is the lowest of low that you could hit. Because you're out of the Champions League, Ricardo. You're not even competing. You're not even putting a fight. And you're not only out of the Champions League. You're dumped out at the bottom of the table. How do I respond to that? Because I think it has become so easy to say the coach should go. Um, and that's the solution to everything. Is that going to be the solution for the issues that Manchester United has at the moment? I am, I am, I am not sure. I am honestly not sure, Lance and Mariah. For me, the biggest issue was that Manchester United did not shop well enough in the summer transfer window. If you can point to a player that has come into this Manchester United setup, who has improved the team in any way, um, then, I mean, you're, you're a great man, because I can't see any. I can't see any player who came in in the summer transfer window who has improved this Manchester United team. And for me, that is the biggest issue with um, Manchester United. And when you add to that the number of injuries, the number of players who are out injured, then you get what you have now. A team that is consistently inconsistent and is unable to deliver quality performances um, consistently throughout the course of the season. In fact, um, what we've seen in the Champions League is Manchester United being unable to maintain um, their, their best level for the duration of a game. I mean, forget from game to game, but even within games, um, as the commentator pointed out, for the first time, or Manchester United is the first team to have scored um, three goals in, what, three group matches of the Champions League and did not win any. For me, that tells you a lot about what you need to know uh, about what Manchester United is going through at the moment. But I'm not sure that the easy fix is to say, well, get rid of the coach. Yeah. Um, it may be, but I'm genuinely not sure. Yeah. I'm not convinced either, because since Sir Alex Ferguson left, we've had some top coaches going to Manchester United. We? Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, did I say something wrong? <laughs> <laughs> no, Lancy. Sorry, continue, but, Lance. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just want to make the point that, you know, outstanding, highly respected coaches have gone to Manchester United, including uh, the special one and Louis van Gaal and so on. These are world-rated coaches and they haven't made a significant impact on the team. Um, certainly nowhere near where Sir Alex Ferguson left it. So the problem is, is, is deeper, in my opinion, than, than the coach. And uh, I take the point as well that because of the injury woes at the moment, there is, there is very little that Ten Hag can do in this period for Manchester United. Yeah, yeah, and maybe it is that the players have to take a lot of the blame as well. Um, when you look at a number of the senior players where they just haven't been good enough, you think about Bruno Fernandes, for example, and the type of quality he brought to the Manchester United setup when he just came. He's been a, a shadow of himself, in, in my opinion. Um, Marcus Rashford has been horrible this season. So, the, the, the players with the experience have not turned up for Manchester United and so you have what you have now. Yeah, well, let's focus on the winners. In one of the days early Arsenal, they already were guaranteed a top spot in their group. They then travelled to the Netherlands to take on current Dutch top flight leaders PSV Eindhoven. Let's take a look at the highlights. So it's Arsenal in the train strip. Get us underway at PSV Stadion. Jorginho, Arsenal now starting to up the tempo and really freeze out their opponents. El Nenny. 
Rodriguez Nelson. Cedric back to Reese Nelson. Finds Nketiah, who finds the corner. Really good build up between Nelson and Cedric. And Nketiah took this so confidently through the legs of Andre Romalo. Bakioko trying to work the space. Vertessen. Sends it wide. Reds it through for Pepe. Batesson! Brilliant goal. Tilmer showing some really good ability on the ball. Finding the space. Threading it through. It was missed by Saliba, and here's Havertz. Cedric digs out the cross towards Inketia. Side netting. All right, Arsenal emphatic in their return to Europe's Premier Cup competition and they were able to comfortably top Group B despite the draw today. And team, Mikel Arteta made approximately eight changes in his team today. So you get the sense that, you know, in his mind, the job was done and dusted. He just needed to play his squad and he gave some other players opportunities. So for me, I'm not even going to judge Arsenal too hard on this performance. They did what they had to do. They got the points, they topped the group, job done for yeah. now. It, when you're in a position of comfort and uh, you can rest players and rotate players and give players that haven't had a lot of playing time and opportunity, uh, at this stage it is always a plus for a coach. So Arsenal, apart from their stutter in early October when Lance beat them by two goals to one, they haven't done much wrong here in the group stages and they've won the group emphatically and, and um, Arsenal are looking pretty solid on, on, on the current run. Yeah, and an excellent finish here from Eddie Nketiah. Um, I think he's had a decent season. His first Champions League goal, by the way, and that was beautifully taken, um, fabulously placed um, by Nketiah. Five goals in the Premier League, Lance and Mariah, and he gets on the Champions League scoreboard as well. But I think he would be delighted with this finish. Just really, really well taken. Yeah, yeah. I have to say, though, with the changes, that Mikel Arteta made, Arsenal looked a shadow of themselves. They look really, really sluggish on the ball and all that, you know, so. But as we said at the top of this segment and while introducing it, we can't really judge him because, of course, he was just utilizing different yeah. players and playing around with the pieces that he has. But for me, if this was the original Arsenal squad, not at all. Yeah, but it's not. When you've qualified already for the next stage of the competition, it's about giving experience to uh, as many players as possible it is a long season and the other part of it is ensuring that your first choice players are not overworked in any way remember arsenal they're trying to win the english premier league they are looking to go deep in europe in the champions league and so every opportunity you get um, to rest your first choice players you will want to do that and they also have a, a, a pretty busy uh, December into January period coming up as well in the Premier League. So it's important that you keep your frontline players as fresh as possible. Yeah, and Eng English teams, all of them, have uh, who play in the Champions League and, well, just English Premier League teams in general have a pretty um, busy December going into January because a lot of the other European top flight leagues uh, take a break for, for Christmas. In England, they don't. And there's been a constant complaint from the managers in England that uh, that Christmas week into the new year is very hectic for them. So when they resume UEFA Champions League football in the new year early, they have to ensure that their, their, their players would have uh, rested enough if you have the opportunity to do that um, so that you can continue your Champions League program. Yeah, PSV Eindhoven, of course, second in that Group B, um, just under Arsenal on nine points. So let's take a look now at the other results on the day. What do we have? Okay, so we just spoke to you about that one all draw between PSV and Arsenal. Lens overcoming Sevilla 2-1, the Bayern Munich win against Manchester United. 
One goal for the win for Copenhagen against Galatasaray. No goals in the draw between Inter Milan and Real Sociedad. Benfica, three goals to beat Red Bull Salzburg. What about that 3-2 win for Real Madrid against Union Berlin? And Napoli, a 2-0 win against Sporting Braga. All right, well, match day six concludes on Wednesday with the following fixtures. So we have Red Star Belgrade up against Manchester City defending champions. Manchester City, RB Leipzig will play Young Boys, Antwerp will be seeing Barcelona, Atletico Madrid play Lazio, Celtic, they face Feyenoord, Dortmund up against PSG, FC Porto will be seeing Shakhtar Donetsk, Newcastle, they play AC Milan. And remember, you can catch all the action on Champions League right here on your home of champions. Quick break, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.